بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ومولانا محمد خاتم النبيين وإمام المرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين وعلى كل من تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين My dear brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. In fact, it is a great honor and pleasure for me to be with you this morning here in this August University. In fact, I was intending to pay a visit to this university and to meet the professors and lecturers of this August Forum and also to meet the students. And I never thought that I have to be, I have to deliver a lecture or something like that. But when I am a student and whenever I meet the students, uh, my uh, nature as a student uh, invites me to speak a few words before my colleagues. So I'm happy to be with you and I'm more happy to receive such precious books written by Professor Ahmad Hafizullah Ta'ala. In fact, uh, it is very astonishing for me that whenever I went to Turkey, I, you know, I uh, was in search of the decisions of the Ottoman judges. Because I am a student of law, I am a student of fiqh, Islamic fiqh. So I wanted to see how the judges of Ottoman Empire implemented the Islamic law in their day-to-day life yes. and the, ju- the judgments of the, uh, the courts are the best thing to, to know how this, these laws were implemented in the days of Ottoman Empire. So I found some archives but unfortunately I did not know the Turkish language and it was in Turkish and there is a Persian, uh, Persian uh, uh, couplet which says Zabane yare man Turkey Turki but man Turki namidana. Oh <laughs> that the, <laughs> that the uh, the <laughs> So therefore I was not able to benefit from those archives. And I was in search of something that could be translated in either in Arabic or in English so that it will be beneficial for myself and for the Ummah. So now I am so happy to see uh, these uh, you know, very masterly works that is, are presented by Professor. I am really very good for, grateful. I am extremely grateful for him to equip me with such a treasure of knowledge. And inshallah, I'll benefit from this because I am in the way of uh, codifying the, Hanafi, uh, the Islamic law to be implemented in our ages. Yeah. How this Islamic law may be implemented in our ages and in our surroundings. Yeah. So p- for that purpose, I have started from Buyur. My book, Fiqhul Buyur, uh, in two volumes, mm-hmm. contains the basic principles of the law of sale. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and at the end, I have, you know, codified the basic principles of, uh, the principles of Islamic sale. Now I am working on mortgage and uh, the uh, guarantee, etc. So I... Uh, will uh, uh, will seek help from these treasures of knowledge 
and I'll be very grateful whenever I find something to my benefit in authoring these books, inshallah. And I have a project to codify the whole Islamic financial law. I have done. MashaAllah, MashaAllah, MashaAllah. Unfortunately, in Turkish language. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I, hope I will <laughs> show you. Inshallah. Yeah, inshallah. Inshallah. So I'll hope that, I hope that inshallah it will be inshallah. Uh, rendered in, in either contact in, uh, yeah. after this Microphone. day. Yeah. Inshallah. 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 Thank you very much. Microphone. Inshallah. Thank you very much. So, Alhamdulillah, uh, it is a very great day in my life that I have come here to see you all. And uh, it was to my uh, astonishing that uh, such a jamia or such a university is established here in uh, Netherlands. And uh, I did not know about it before. So I congratulate you to have such a university and that in this university you are learning the Islamic studies, the, I think, tafsir, hadith, yes, yes. and fiqh. Completely and Islamic all Islamic sciences. All Islamic sciences, mashallah. So I congratulate you to have this university and congratulate the students that they have such a uh, unique, uni unique uh, you know, opportunity to learn the Islamic studies from the uh, you know, learned people like uh, Sheikh uh, Ahmad and Sheikh uh, Jalal. We are Duhani. students for you. <laughs> In fact, uh, I met yesterday night with Sheikh Jalal and I benefited from his knowledge, alhamdulillah. So uh, you are very fortunate to have these people to uh, teach you and I, uh, you know, advise you to devote your time to learn more and more, because ilm, that is knowledge, has no end. And uh, you, uh, it is a Arabic proverb that طلب العلم من البحد إلى اللحد It is sometimes uh, referred to as a hadith. Yeah. It is not a hadith. It, but it is a saying of some learned people, and it is true that the, the quest for knowledge does not end, has no end at all. Even to the last breath of a, of a student, he must, be, must have the quest for knowledge. I quoted last night the Imam Abu Yusuf Taala that when he was on bed, before his, and shortly before his death, so one of his, his pupils came to him to, uh, to ask about his health. So, Imam Uyusur Ramadullah answered him that, about his health. Then, suddenly, he asked the, the pupil whether the Sai, whether uh, the Rami of Jamarat in Hajj, it is afdal or it is better to perform it on a riding on a, on a horse or, or on a camel, or, you know, Stand. Uh, on a, uh, walking. This question was in the mind of Imam Abu Yusuf shortly before his death. Then the pupil said, it will, it will be more uh, rewardable to perform Rami while walking. He said, no. Then he said, then it will be more rewardable if he, if he performs uh, Rami while riding on a camel or something. He said, no. So then the, what is the answer of the question? He said, the Rami of the first day, that is of Jamara Aqaba, should be riding on a horse or on a camel. And the Rami of the, uh, the later two days uh, should be while walking, because Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi done the Rami in this way, this way. He said, the pupil says that when I learned this from Imam Abu Yusuf, I walked out from the, uh, the house of Imam Abu Yusuf, and I had taken some, a few steps 
then a voice came that imam abu subhanahu wa ta'ala has passed away so this is the talabul ilm min al mahdi ila al lahr so therefore uh, i advise you to create the quest of knowledge in your hearts if you have that quest then it will uh, always increase your knowledge and if you are you know just uh, uh, complacent on what you have learned and you have no further quest for further knowledge then it it is not a fashion of a true student so i advise that you should take this opportunity to be here by being here to create a quest for knowledge and to benefit from such great uh, professors who are teaching you and at the same time i will advise myself first and you the on the on the uh, be, before uh, for me and you also that the mere knowledge is not enough for the betterment of one's life here and hereafter mere knowledge without practicing mm-hmm. without having this knowledge translated into one's actions so if for example we know that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prescribed five times prayer and we do not offer prayer then this ilm or this knowledge has nothing to do with our uh, betterment here and in here hereafter and the true ilm or true knowledge is that is combined with true actions according to the knowledge you have you have acquired for example the following of the sunnah of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam laqad kana lakum fi rasulillah uswatun hasana liman kana yarju allah wal yawm al akhir wa dhakara allah kathira fa the basic purpose of one's a muslim life is that he follows the footprints of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam in his every act in his every word he speak in every act he, he do, does so this is the basic requirement that mere knowledge is not enough there are many orientalist who learn islamic studies learn ahadith learn islamic jurisprudence but after you know getting into the waters of uh, uh, knowledge you know they cannot you know have a drop on their lips yes. because they do not do not believe in that science they do not act upon it so therefore we the muslims should appreciate that the mere knowledge is not enough my uh, <laughs> late father hazrat maulana mufti muhammad shafi rahimahullah taala who was the great mufti of pakistan so he used to say that if mere knowledge was enough for the betterment of one then this shaitan yeah iblis yeah. was the most superior to all humanity <laughs> because he knows he has knowledge more than we have yes lekin but this knowledge could not save him from from fire so therefore we uh, you know let me you know tell you uh, a very uh, particular uh, saying of hazrat maulana ashraf ali thanvi mm-hmm. yeah ashraf ali thanvi i have heard uh, yeah he was a, he he wrote more than 1000 books yes and he was the sufi imam in hadith in fiqh and uh, and also in islamic jurisprudence and a sufi he used to say that shaitan has four ayn he was alim very knowledgeable he was arif mm. arif in the sense that he knew that even when he was you know blaming uh, being blamed by allah subhanahu wa taala 
even in that time, point of time, he make a dua. He made a dua. Rabbi anzirni ila yom yu'atun. Because he knew that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not, uh, not you know, uh, overwhelmed by emotions. So therefore, if I pray something and he may give it, he will give, give it to me. So the, he was Arif. Alim? Arif. But then he, then he was Abid. Worshipper. But he, you know, he uh, lacked the fourth ayn. That is, he was not Ashik. <laughs> he was Alim. He was Arif. He was Abid. But was not Ashik. So, had he been Ashik, then he could not uh, refuse to bow before Adam alayhi salatu wasalam. So, you know, I'm reminding myself that my knowledge is not enough unless I act upon that knowledge and follow the footprints of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasalam. Alhamdulillah. This is the basic purpose of a Muslim student. And we should uh, act upon that uh, and uh, I pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he makes us following the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in each and every sphere of life. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Wa shukran lakum lil ustazi al-aziz li kalimatihi al-jayyida al-nafi'a al-mustafida jiddan al-an ana adu جميع الأسئلة أولا نعم تمام نعم. بعد الأسئلة أنا سأدعو جميع الأساتذة إلى غرفتي للتعرف مع الأستاذ العزيز فردا فردا بإذن الله تعالى تفضلوا سبيه هفت نفراغ أي مخت ستلة بسم الله Ilm is like uh, like it never ends. That was one of the things you said. Um, is it then wise to say to uh, to ourselves and to other people the best thing to invest in this dunya is not the materialist world but the ilm because that doesn't end. This materialist also doesn't end, but you can never grab it, and the ilm you can grab it. Okay. Yes. 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 You know, if you you know <coughs> persuade the people to invest in knowledge. That will be much better yes. than investing in uh, some baldi affairs, because the ilm, you know, is a sadaqa jariya, sadaqa jariya. And when you teach a, a person, that person, whatever he acts upon that knowledge, is to the credit of your, uh, and it has no end at all. I have already, you know, I teach Sahil Bukhari in Darul Room. So my lectures on Sahil Bukhari are recorded, transcribed, printed, and published. And uh, so far in English or in Urdu, in Urdu. 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 No. But but they are, no, no. Uh, they are they are being translated now, inshallah. Uh, up, uh, 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 Twelve volumes have appeared so far, and the others are on way. So, Alhamdulillah, you know, these are very, uh, very vast lectures on the ahadith, on the, the interpretation of ahadith, uh, particularly the jurisprudential uh, principles uh, derived from the ahadith of Rasulullah. I have, Alhamdulillah, worked on three books of ahadith. One is Sahih Muslim, that is, you are referred to, that is Takmila Surah al 
then this is the in'am al-bari fi amali sahih al-bukhari wa thani wa dars al-tirmidhi al-jami' al-tirmidhi wa aidan tubi'a bil lughat al-urduya wa al-an turjima azun ha الحمد <laughs> Before, yeah. In fact, uh, the, there should be a balance between the inner dunya. وقد قال رسول الله هذا روي عن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أنه قال اعمل لدنياك بقدر بقائك فيها وعمل لآخرتك بقدر بقائك فيها ولكن أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم has taught us to maintain a balance between the two you know because you know that رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم has you know practiced تجارة Trade. Yeah. He practiced zira'ah yes. uh, in juruf. He practiced, uh, you know, uh, uh, employment. Yani he was job, okay, in, in Makkah. So the, he did all these things. But nothing of, uh, of these things has hindered him yeah. from following the commands of Allah. Yeah. Allah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the balance. رجال لا تليهم جارة ولا بيع عن ذكر الله إذا سمحتم أن قل كلمة الإمام الشافعي أحسن جزاك الله يعني هو يقول بالإنجليزية دكتور أحمد يعني لا يعني أنا أقول باللغة العربية ولكن لأنني يعني حفظت كلمته أنا كفيل على رزق علوم الطلبة سبحان الله سبحان الله You will not find a student of Islamic studies that he committed suicide because yes. of hunger. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. Bismillah. Is there a prayer for me? Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Sorry, I'm not a student, but uh, what as I say about uh, for Ain, how does, what step do you would you recommend us to take so we can become a shaykh <laughs> of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala? To follow the Sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In kuntum tuhibun Allah, fatbiyuni. Yahbikum Allah. Ma sha Allah, Ustad. أفرحت قلوبنا أستاذ العزيز والله أنا مسؤول جدا شكرا بهذه الصحبة الكريمة ويعني أشكر شكرا جميعا لحسن الحفاوة شكرا لكم شكرا لكم الاستماع بارك الله فيكم جميعا